And I mean, God was just all over me. So anyway, the next night they were going to give out diplomas for us that had attended the seminar. I got a call at four o'clock and said, come home, that you have no sitter for Nikki. Nikki, I had a child that's 12 years old, and Nikki was born severely retarded. Said that she would never walk, she would never talk, she would never know who she was. She had an incurable bone disease, epilepsy, hole in the heart, and it just went on. And it just about broke me up. I mean, there was no other words. I didn't know Jesus. And we were transferred to Columbus, Ohio, when she was a year old. And when she was two years old, Jesus just came in my kitchen one day and cleaned my clock. So, I mean, that was just it. I was delivered instantly. I'm not talking about Valium. Spent 14 years as a drug addict and alcoholic and what have you. And Jesus just showed up in my kitchen. And I mean, I was just wild. And Jesus, I should have been locked up. A lot of people wished I had been locked up in the back. I was in a Baptist church. I w only thing I said was, I found myself on the floor when I came to and I said, I'll go to church. And I took off and ran into Baptist church, you know. But anyway, God started, God started moving. And I believe, you know, Nikki was about three and a half. And one day I was sitting in my family room and I looked over and she was in a basket. I mean, a real live basket. I was talking to God just like I'm talking to you. And I said, you know, God, if I ever saw a basket case, that's it. That's a real life basket case, God. And I said, you know, it's a shame that kid has to live like that. I said, you know, she doesn't even have a chance. I can't stand watching little children locked in bodies, never knowing that what it is to live. I can't tell you. I've always been like this. I have all. I can't stand it. Never knowing, you know, what it is to really be able to live and have to grow up and end up crazy like some of us ended up crazy. And I was sitting there, and suddenly I said huh, Jesus, if you brought me from where you did, you'd just do anything. You, I mean, you'd just do anything. If you brought me out of that horrible pit now that my eyes, like, you'd do anything. Now, I didn't know about Norval Hayes and Kenneth Hagen and all those other guys. I was in a Baptist church, folks. And I said, that's it. And I was already sharing my testimony all over. And I was telling everybody, Jesus is healing Nikki. Jesus is healing Nikki. My husband said, I wish you'd shut up. You're making a fool out of all of us. The kid's getting worse. She was getting worse. I would say that she was getting worse. That's what it looked like. And I kept on, and God spoke to me and said, three times in one week, he said, I've healed her, she's catching up. And finally, I said the third time, I said, I have been a teacher. And I said, oh, just like congregation. I started bleeding for Nikki. And I'll tell you, no one could take that from me. No one could take if Jesus could bring me where he did, he could do anything. And I stood on it. I stood on it. People said I was crazy. Pastor said, that's obsolete. That's in the Old Testament. That's in the New Testament. But it doesn't happen today. And I said, every time I found something in the Bible, I just scratched out whoever's name was in it. And I put mine. And I said, that's mine. And so God had given me this child, and I believed it. And God keeps speaking to me all night long. i got to say it. Hannah prayed a prayer, too, and it changed a nation. Hannah prayed a prayer. God won't let, I have to say it, God just keeps talking about Hannah all night to me. She prayed a prayer, and God honored it. God honored that. I told him, you did it for Hannah, you'll do it for me. So God started moving, and God gave me one thing at a time to believe for. It, it wasn't God couldn't do everything at once, but he started, gave me one thing, and I wanted to hear her talk, and I believed it, and I confessed it. I wanted, to, I wanted to hear her call me a name. And she did. You know what she called me? Daddy for two years. <laughs> she called me dad. But I heard it. Then she walked. Then she talked. Nikki, this is all taking place in eight years. Nikki runs like a gazelle. She has no bone disease. She's not epileptic. She doesn't have a hole in the heart. She walks, she talks, and she goes to school. And when you said that last night about being raped over and over, Nikki has been raped more times than, you know, people could ever dream of. And I kept saying, God, what is it? God had told me that there had been a door that had opened. And I've dealt a lot in this, and I know a door opened. So God, I started saying, God, I thank you for revealing the truth. Let the true nature of this person stand up. I really, really want to say this part, Norval. And the truth came out. Nikki had been molested to, for 12 years by her natural father, a professional man, an engineer that will help little old ladies across the street 
give to the blood to the Red Cross every month, wave the, the American flag like it's, you know, the blood of Jesus. I'm going to tell you, folks, the world's crazy. The devil's out to kill you. He's out to kill you. And I did pray, and God said to me one time, he spoke to me, and I feel I, I really want you to hear this. And God said to me, would you let somebody hold a gun at Nikki's head? And I said, almost like God, don't get impertinent with me. You know better than that. He said, then don't let the devil take your kid. He said, you wouldn't let anybody hold the gun. He said, so it's your responsibility. And I, I believe. And God just kept moving. I mean, Nikki was a combination of Down syndrome. She was autism. She, she had no name. She had so many. I mean, you're talking about mixed up. She had everything. Severe emotional problems. Talk about hyperactive. Don't tell me about it. We were another case. They even studied it in Columbus. They never seen anything like it. She was four years old before I ever had a night's sleep. She was up all night long tearing up the room, tearing the covers off, all the furniture. Man, I mean, she'd peel the wallpaper off the wall. And God kept moving and moving, and I kept believing and believing, staying up all night long, finding Satan. I mean, going after him. I mean, I didn't know anything about it, but I learned real fast. I learned real fast about it. And that night at graduation, I went home, and I didn't have a sitter. And there was this girl, this was so strange, that had heard me speaking in the clothes and things. And, and she said, Patches, maybe Jesus wants you to bring Nikki. And I thought, you don't know what you're saying. You know, she'll get up there and find up normal. And I mean, you know, I could say, God, you know, God, I, I really want to go blessed. I need that time, God, to be fed by myself. I need that time, God. I need to be ministered. I do this, I do that. You know, really, not only self-pity, but just self-centeredness. That's what it was. I went home. I called, honestly. I have people, and this sounds like a, an exaggeration, but they'd come close to laying their lives down for me. People God's blessed me with. I called, made more phone calls than you. I after two dollars at the Marriott. I said I'm going home and call. I called. They were going to stupid things. Don't be offended. They were going to Tupperware parties. These are people that that God uses mightily. They were saying, No, I can't go. I've got a Tupperware party. I have never heard such things in all my life. These excuses these were people making. And I kept hearing what this woman says. Why don't you bring Nikki tonight? Maybe God wants to minister to Nikki. So we came that night, and it was a powerful meeting. It was powerful, and it was a business seminar. And I'll tell you, I told Norval, I believe this with all my heart, of all the seeds that he has ever planted, I believe that was probably the most powerful, will bring more harvest, was out of that seminar, that it, it will change your life, folks. I recommend everybody going to that seminar. Somebody sent me, and I had written down on a note, God, you mentioned Ireland. I said, God, Next time, I'm going to send three people. Somebody paid my way. I'm going to send three people. I'm going to crusade Columbus next time it even comes within a 100-mile radius. Everybody I know, I think, should go to it. Not because of what happened to me, but what it changed my life. Anyway, normal minister to this one side, and it came time to minister to this side, and he looked right at me. And I know sometimes he looks and he doesn't see a thing. I, I could just tell that. And he looked over there, and I tried to get up with Nikki, and ordinarily a fear will just take over her. She loves coming to these meetings, but fear will take over her. This time, she has gone completely asleep. I mean, she's out of it. And I start to get up, and I can't move. Twice, I try to get about seat, and he said, stay where you are, and I'll come to you. And he came. I didn't feel anything. He just laid hands like he did on everyone else. You know, we didn't fall out. We didn't do anything. And he taught on James 5. And he talked about the man with club feet. That was probably the most simple message I guess I have ever heard. It was so simple. And I said, huh, well, if it happened, that Presbyterian man with club feet, God, you know where my faith is. I bet he thought, yeah, I know where it is. But I thanked him for it, praised him, going home in car, Nikki, if you're a teacher, you'll know what I'm saying. Couldn't sequence or what have you, you know what I'm saying? I got her going home in the car, and I kept saying, say, thank you, Jesus. And she might be able to say, thank you, or get Jesus, but she couldn't get the two things together. And I'd say, say, James. She'd say, James. And I'd say, say, five, and say, five, and went on and on and on. Went to bed, and that night, I got my Bible out. And I read this. I had, I'd had problems with this James 5 before. And the reason was, I have to say why I had problems with it, was because it said, bring him to the elders of the church. 
but I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it because I kept looking on the outside of man and I kept saying, God, I see those men up there and they could not, they don't have faith. They couldn't in the natural crawl out of the paper bag by themselves. And how can I expect in men to lay hands on somebody and have faith? I couldn't do it. And they really had problems with that. I'm serious. You know, if I want somebody to pray with me, I want somebody who's going to believe God's word or I'm not even going to bother. I mean, that's just where I come from. So anyway, I went home. I took that out and I said, God, it said, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders. I said, God, this is your word and I believe everything it says. I said, this man represented an elder. And it says in there, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. I said, well, he did that. And he did it in the name of Jesus, and I know about the name of Jesus, and says, and the prayer of faith, and I said, he definitely has faith, and so do, so do I, and he had prayer, and I believe it's a prayer of faith, shall save the sick. So therefore, it's done. I'll never ask you again, that's the end of that, and I went to bed. I said, thank you for the healing. God, next morning, I said, thank you for Nikki's healing. I just kept saying, I thank you for James 5, 14, 15. The school called 6 o'clock, 48 hours later. Now, I don't know if you know it or not, but it was exactly three weeks to the day when you prayed for Nikki. And the school, the director of the school called, and also Nikki's teacher, and she says, what has happened to Nikki? And God so quickly said to me, this is the way God talks to me, he said, milk it for what it's worth. He would say to me, listen, and don't say Jesus did this, or we had her prayed for, or you'll close her out. Just listen. And she named 16 things so quickly that I'd been praying for. She says, Nikki is reading. She's writing. She's starting to print. She said she can retain. She can sequence. She said, Nikki can sit in her seat. She said she's not as hyper. Glory to God. And she went on and on and on and on. And Nikki said every night, Nikki goes all day long and she says, thank you. And she said, I said, it's James. James. She says, five, 14, 15. Oh, thank Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, it's just, there's a countenance that has changed. I mean, it, the veil has lifted. It's like, you know, I always, I had no problem. I've always known Nikki would be healed, and I'm saying no one could take that from me. No one, no one could ever take that. And she is changing from glory to glory. You can see the change every day, every day. And her little emotions are changing. You know, she doesn't go tearing up everything. She hasn't torn up anything since then. But what Jesus did for me, and what he did for Nikki, he'll do for you. He'll do it for you. And we just love you in Columbus, Norville. I forgot to tell that one part. I've got to tell it. The Spirit of God came up on me in Broad Street, and he said, the spirit of direction is up on you. And immediately, my teaching head says, oh, yeah, that's an office of the Holy Spirit who directs. God said, I said, the spirit of direction is upon you. And suddenly God started dealing with me and he kept, and I, I was like, normal, he's talking about, God keeps telling me this, I'll go. Like he told him, I'll go to Florida, pass out them tracks. God kept saying, go to Cleveland, Tennessee. Go to Cleveland, Tennessee. Go to Cleveland, Tennessee. I kept saying, God, you keep telling me this, I'm gonna go. But I've been telling Jesus, I'm available. I go any place you want me to go. So finally, I mean, it would rest. So the power of God just kept dealing with me, the Spirit of God kept dealing and kept dealing. And I didn't even realize that there was a seminar until I made plans to leave to come down here. And God just worked it all out. And all I keep seeing is multitudes of children, and I can't shake the home for the unwed mothers. I cannot shake it. I cannot shake it. I can't shake it. receive when you pray and you shall have it believe that you receive when you pray and you shall have it the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up 